Hi guys, I'm with Victoria Monsoros, um, the founder of Inspiration Unleashed. Uh, Victoria, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Inspiration Unleashed and your business? Yeah, absolutely. I'm the founder of Inspiration Unleashed Coaching and also the Health Unleashed System. I work with various entrepreneurs, managers, go-getters, high achievers. I help them achieve just more health and alignment and confidence in their life and relationships. Hmm. And, and last time we talked, it, it was nice to bond over, like you, you gave a speech on, uh, um, to Amazon about meal prep. And I thought that's awesome because I've done this whole, I, I've, I'm one of those people that has tried to prep meals every Sunday and like cook like 25 meals in advance. And that's like my personality. And I, I love like Tim Ferriss and that kind of thinking. So I'm, I'm glad yeah. we're aligned in that way. Yes, yes. Efficiency and having systems that work for you, I would say, is something I love to geek out over. And more than that, being able to, in the moment, to actually adjust your system according to what you actually need, rather than like, here's the system and you either follow it or you don't. And I find when we have no flexibility in the systems that we ascribe to, well, it becomes an all or nothing rather than like, how can we be resourceful and do it anyway? Mm. Of our circumstances, our schedule and all that. That, that's so true. Like people think of systems as a fixed thing, but in my life, it's always been like, I'm, I'm very systematic about things, but I'm always tweaking things literally every day. And it's not that I'm changing the whole strategy and system. It's just like, you need to make tweaks in your systems in order for, in order for them to function or otherwise they die out and they're outdated. They don't work anymore because no, nothing is really fixed. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay. So uh, we're going to talk about something really fascinating um victoria was able to uh, to speak live in front of at amazon um to to many of their employees uh not just once but twice or yeah. times. okay <laughs> twice and mm -hmm. um i want to know everything about how that happened what the speech was like what that's done for you and maybe how that can be repeatable how can other life coaches and and you know people who are looking for speaking gigs maybe learn something that can help them repeat that process. Uh, so let's start, like, how did this come about? So I have a friend who works at Amazon. Friend would be more of an acquaintance, I would say, somebody that I know, um, and she has a great vision. And so we've just been, you know, connected over however long we've known each other now, I think like a year and a half. And so part of get that element is like, okay, like getting clear of what does Amazon need? Like, do they, you know, kind of like planting that seed a little bit. So I think it's to actually get in there to speak, it was a very long time coming. It wasn't just like, bam, like Amazon, what's up? Like, I'm here, I've been waiting for you for the last five minutes. So yeah, so to actually get in the door with that, although I knew someone in there, I actually got rejected four times before I actually got cleared to even go once. Wow. Huh. Yeah, they already, at first they had somebody else, at first, at, then they weren't interested in that, and then it wasn't applicable, and then the event that I was going to go to, the HR decided not to do. So a big battle of it was the company itself seeing value in this, you know, this material. And mm -hmm. so part of that was being able to, one, not take it personally, and have enough grit and just enough playfulness, and like every week I was like, how about now? What about now? What about this topic? What about this topic? And what I found really helped me get my foot in the door was to put my mind in the feet of the people actually working in Amazon. Mm. Where I wanted to go in, you know, my agenda was I want to go in there. I want to help teach compassionate health and really break like the all or nothing health, like, like dichotomy that we have within ourselves. They were not interested in that because it sounds fluffy. They're like, no, we need like something practical that will help. Yeah. Yeah, it almost sounds like a little uh, too obscure for them. And it's like, I like that you had to test multiple ideas in order for like, in order to like land the right one. Um, Cause you know, and, and also just coming from a place of like, who are they? What do they need the most? And what are they looking for? Well, they're really busy. Um, they, you know, they just want like a quick practical tip or just some system to help them optimize their life without sacrificing like any of their producti productivity or whatnot. Um, of course. And uh, yeah, and, and it's and it's what's actually interesting is like Amazon itself is that's how they operate their business is like very 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 customer like research oriented. If you if you like read, read Jeff Bezos and what he says about things, it's like all about 
customer. Like, I mean, you can criticize some practices that he does, but it's all about customer research at, at its core. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, which is why when it was, oh, and part of what made this an option was because I had been posting on my Facebook a lot of like, here's how meal planning works. Here, what is meal planning? And so this woman had, she already knew that that was something I had expertise in. Mm. Where I had just gone to her and just been like, I wanted to talk about this. She had had no, she hadn't seen with her own eyes that what I have to say is personally relevant for her and all of her coworkers. It wouldn't have been, like it would it just, I don't think it would have happened. Right. So there, there are a few factors at play like a you needed to know a person not like well but just have someone in your network who was connected to amazon and then b mm -hmm. you needed to like have the topic um like that was relevant enough to amazon but then there also yeah. c you needed to um like be already perceived as an expert in that topic through doing all the facebook lives and all the content creation so it's like yeah. a bunch of different things that had to, needed to be like at play for you to get that and what i'm curious is like what who was the person that was rejecting you like who who how do you even pitch something to amazon and like who rejects you and who do you talk to it was the friend who had a vision for amazon mm -hmm. and then in order for that vision to come to life she's like there is an issue with health and wellness here <clears throat> but like the uh, hr kept saying well that idea isn't a good one we don't want to invest time in that you know mm -hmm. It's all of all of those things and then eventually they had somebody else and it ended up going down the line where somebody else had started this program through Amazon of helping make their work life easier and that's where I ended up getting it in it was uh, in a already had um, which is interesting because that could be like reverse engineered it's like looking at the programs that these big companies already have and then just seeing how how, how you can add to the discussion um, exactly. Is it always, do you think it's HR? Is that, is, so if, if you're looking for speaking gigs for at big companies, is it, is it always HR that that department that you're trying to like break into and talk to? Is that who, is that the person that has the most influence on the matter? You know, I don't know the answer to that from <clears throat> what I've learned is the influence comes from within. HR doesn't know me. Like, I don't work for them. I have never generated anything for them. They don't owe anything to me. But if I'm able to make a big enough difference in somebody who's high enough in their rank, whether that's with my energy or with like, no, like I'm going to make your work life better, that person advocating for it, I think will have more say than me saying, look at my website or watch this video. Yeah. Oh, oh certainly. Yeah. I mean, you like, it, that's exactly like, you trying to self promote yourself doesn't really work because it's, there's, it's just, you need some social proof to back it up. And then when someone else has the same thing, it's literally 10 times as effective. So of course. part of it is getting an in. And then the other part of it, I, I really think is persistence because yeah. I asked her every week and there wouldn't have, I don't want to say every week, like every two weeks, huh. like consistently being like, what about now? What about now? Right, right. How long did it take? In her mind. How long did the process take? About two months. Okay, so basically, like finding the right person, like in the company, and maybe it can be anyone in the company that you're looking for, and then persisting for like two months, maybe a little, maybe even more, um, uh, and that, and that, that's kind of what's needed to get your foot in the door in that company. Um, but that sounds like a repeatable process, though. Like you find the right, you find the person that you're somewhat connected to, uh, and that's not too hard. Just like find a person like that works for the company. And then just persist and follow up and follow up and follow up until something sticks. And they're like, yeah, that's a good topic. Yeah. Um, and part of that being an option was because I was at somebody else's, like another company's open house mm -hmm. and like complimentary sessions to friends of hers, to people. So she had over and over again, people saying, wow, what she does is amazing. It made a difference for me. Or it wasn't just her being like, I'm going to go out on a limb. It's, right. She, she, she was aware of you. She trusted you and your reputation. She knew she's like, she was able to see that you're like a, a real expert and incredible source. So that, that was a lot to do with, with it too. Yeah. Um, and I think like another part of it is also that the first event that I went to was very small mm. and it was because of how I handled the first event that I was able to go in and speak to like three times as many people. Mm. 
that makes a lot of sense. That, and it makes a lot of sense, like, not to aim too big when you're just getting your foot in the door in the company and go for oh. just like, the smallest possible size so that they can trust you and then, and then get you to speak in front of 60 people. Um, of, of course, yeah. And so, yeah, when it started, it was 60. And then on the second event, there were over 200 people that had RSVP. Oh. Wow, that's awesome! Like I thought, the first one was—I thought the second one was sixty. So that's even—that's even more impressive to me. Um, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, that—that that would be a lot of people would. Are I know a lot of coaches I talk to. Their, you know, their vision for their business is they want to have a bigger speaking presence, and they see themselves like they—they're going after corporate gigs, and that's like the key. Um, but they're having trouble breaking into the to the companies and like finding the speaking gigs consistently. Um, um, but that that's, this is an awesome success story of like how you did it and how it's also how it can be a re repeatable process. Yeah. And I think something to keep in mind, like, you know, one thing just like, I don't know, just to be transparent, is like when I got there for the first talk, I had consulted a speaking coach. I had consulted my business coach and I had technically done what was advised of me. Mm -hmm. and she saw my presentation. She's like, that's not going to fly. Oh, wow. That's not going to work for Amazon. Like you're going to have to like, gonna have to revamp it and although I had like I had it all strategically planned out because I was able to be like all right cool well I also made this awesome free guide and I can just like walk them through this and these other systems in there because I, I was expecting them just to do work on their own while giving them like a lot of information during our session but more like I think what it was recommended of coaches was don't give them too much don't give them too much value uh, okay. because I broke that and gave them a ton of value that they had they were like ah I like what she's offering. She's not just trying to sell me. And that, I think that difference is what really, not only being able to be like, oh shit, change your whole presentation. Yeah. But like add a bunch into it 15 minutes before you go on. And then of course, since it's my material, like it's not like it's that hard to add to it. Cause it like came from, yeah, you know, it, you know, the material. Yeah. Um, wait, wait. And so that's that. really interesting. So you, they, I guess I'm guessing the presentation was maybe like it had too many lead magnets or like too many like, uh, okay, if you want to learn more, like book something with me, blah, blah, blah. Um, or was well, like what it was is like I had it set up with what is it, why should you do it, and here's a couple myths about it. Okay. Her thing was we don't need to know what it is. We don't need to know why it's important because if it's important, we signed our time to come be there for an hour with you. Ah, uh, Okay. We don't need you to prove to us to do it because we're so busy and we want to do it. So wow. I'm telling us how to do it, not the importance of it. That's so interesting because, like, you know, what we what we learned from like Simon Sinek and all all these like you know the TED Talk uh, speakers is like you know you start with why and then you go to like how and then you go to what. But it, but it's it, what really is king is like knowing your audience and what they're looking for. And so, yeah. you know, Amazon doesn't care about why they just want to know how we can do it and how we can apply it to our lives. And, and that's pretty cool that, that, you know, it's not something that you can learn just by like reading books and, and like speaking to speaking consultants. It's something that you can only learn by like doing it and, and being on the spot. So that, that's interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting lesson for sure. And the, what I noticed, so I was, far more successful my second time speaking mm -hmm. and I measured success by how many by how many people came and saw my presentation like how many people applied to have a session with me mm, afterwards afterwards right mm -hmm. and part of that was like okay if I do this correctly and I really am giving them what they need in the way that they need it I will get more people applying mm -hmm. so for the first time I only had four people apply you know for 60 people which is it's all right it's not bad and of that, I got a couple clients. Mm -hmm. And then with the other group, I had 45 people apply. Wow, that's amazing. And the difference in that, I really believe, is because I stopped, I stopped dancing around their pain points. Ah. I, I really got clear. I'm like, all right, guys, are you like, I'm not here to just tell you another how. Like, if you aren't committed and this isn't something that's important to you, stop wasting your time and like leave. You know, <laughs> actually come. Yeah. Um, and be committed. And if you're tired of this problem and you're tired of that problem and you're, and you're really just ready to have a change, well then listen up because this will change your life. Wow. Wait, so you just got right to the value. Oh, of course. It's like, yeah, you tired of not fitting in your clothes. You're tired of like, are you tired of having excuses like being busy? Like I get it. I've been there rather than like trying to be their friend and their friend, like 
my personality comes out in what I'm sharing. I don't need to be like, oh guys, it's all right, and da da da, and like pretend that they aren't struggling because everyone has struggles. And it mm-hmm. seems once I owned that and then gave them value, it was like, no, oh, like I promise you, you do this, your life will get easier. Uh, They're like, I, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, and it's true. Right. And you, and, and what we're, all, what we're taught, like kind of in this like sales and marketing world is often like tickle the pain point and like, just talk about the pain point and then you butter them up and then you can like pitch them something. But that's like nonsense because, um, you know, what really matters is the value and what you're, what you're teaching someone and like getting to the value right away. And people can, people can feel when all you're doing is like tickling their pain point and, and not like actually providing any value. So it, it just, it's just, is it's great that you you know you went you got straight to the value and then you got 45 would you say appointments or, or what is it strategy sessions yeah for i i had them go through a double process where they had to apply and actually follow through a questionnaire in order to even get the opportunity to schedule a session with me yeah that's amazing and and that's and of that i think i got shit i don't know maybe like 10 clients that's amazing and and so and aha that I had afterwards is like I've had this fear this quiet fear as a business owner being like if I give them too much value they're not going to need me yeah and the reality is that they don't even follow through on what you told them I, I made a comprehensive guide a few of them a lot of them didn't even look at it it was like having the information and having somebody tell you is not does not mean that you're actually going to do and actually implementing it is a totally different beast and so you know, one thing that I've started implementing in my own like freebies is like, yes, I, I do amazing freebies mm-hmm. because if you're willing to do the work and you're willing to look at it, awesome. And I know that even if you have a lot of value, it doesn't make me like, it doesn't mean that you don't need my help, but some people, not everyone's my client. And that doesn't mean that if you're not my client, you shouldn't have amazing tools. Right. I, yeah. That that is a hundred percent accurate, and we should not be afraid to give free value. Like as my mentor, um, Ramit Sethi says, like ninety nine percent of the content that he gives away is free, and then he does have like high, he has premium offers and stuff. But ninety nine percent of the material he releases is free, and that only that doesn't subtract from his business. That actually makes people more likely to to want to buy deeper stuff and deeper engagement. So yeah. yeah, that's a definitely a lesson that everyone everyone should like internalize is that free value is not going to um, cheapen your business or, and it's not going to like take away sales. Oh, and I, I've had one thing that I ran into over and over on my, um, on my consults is, you know, I sent them a, my frequently asked questions. I sent them my testimonials for them to read through all that. And when I asked them, did you read through my FAQs? A lot of them were like, I already know you. I already trust you. I don't need to ask you those. I don't need to read through the questions. Like you've already built my trust. And for them starting out the call with that, simply because I just went there to give them value. And at the end I was like, you know, book a call with me. Yeah. And they, of course they had that link available in the beginning, which I think for them to guide and all that, which probably helped with the numbers, Mm -hmm. but definitely like having that has been really helpful. And then I mean, then you have, you can even have like a whole resource page on your website, which just gives you more expertise. Yeah, no, exactly. That, that can supplement everything and that can en- enhance the brand. But yeah, at the, at the core, and there's certain things you can do to help make people more likely to convert. But at the core, it's like just providing value, like solving problems, answering questions. And, you know, you seem to do that really well. Um, were you nervous at all when you were, when you were doing the talks? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just whole, make sure. I've wanted to get into public speaking for a while and I find it amazing that my very first solid public speaking it was for Amazon. Yeah. And you like, it was like nerve wracking, but you're like, I need to do this. <laughs> well, I'm kind of like, I'm of the nature where like I will go for anything and then I'll just rise to the occasion of what I get. Yeah. <laughs> then like incrementally, like it's, think like oh I'm ready for this I'm ready for this like no I want to do public speaking here's an opportunity here we go let's knock it out Mm. um so like of course I was really nervous so I think what my saving grace was is it was streamed all across Amazon and so the people in the room was actually like not that many people 
mind, I could trick myself. I'm like, oh, it's just me and these people here. Like I do amazing with groups at 10 or 15. But in reality, there's like dozens of people watching. Right, right, right. right. But, but because I couldn't see them, I could turn it into a joke of like, oh, what's up, camera? Like, yeah. what, we're hanging out, we're doing our thing. But really after I got through the first few minutes, um, I just relaxed and, you know, but the leading up to it part, I'm like, totally nervous. Mm. Just remember like that second time I was like going through mantras. I was like, ah, I'm a winner and I'm <laughs> successful and I'm worthy. Like, and I just did that so that I couldn't think of anything else. And then once it got started, I asked people questions that went away. So mm. I think it would be unreasonable to expect no nerves. That is something that you really care about. Yeah. Because no, if I wasn't yeah. invested in it, then I wouldn't care, and I probably wouldn't give as good of a presentation because I, I would have no attachment. You know, I know. I, I think I think it was uh, actually Beyonce who said, "The more nervous she is before a show, the better the show is going to be." I believe that. Um, so yeah, I, and I don't even listen to Beyonce, but I I, I remember I like that she said that. Um, yeah, that that's a great wisdom right there from you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for uh, telling us this whole thing. Uh, I think this will be extremely valuable for anyone looking for speaking gigs, corporate speaking gigs, and there's a lot to be reverse engineered from here. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, to, to share the story with us. Um, do you have any goals real quick? Like what's, what's the next bigger step in speaking? Are, are you trying to go for a TED Talk next? Or, uh, I, would love to a TED Talk. I don't know if I would be next. I have a few companies that I, I want to get in. Mm -hmm. um, because underneath all of it, compassionate health is what I'm trying to promote. Um, and so my, I'm going to, I'm working on getting Lululemon right now. Ooh, nice. I like it. Same yeah. process, just repeat the process and I think you'll get there. Exactly. Um, yeah. Well, thanks so much for, for, um, for doing this interview. Well, thank you so much, Matt.